Hey there fellow chess enthusiasts and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are diving deep into the fascinating world of chess and chess combinations, where you will learn how to master chess strategy and become a chess strategy beast. So whether you're just a chess beginner or already an advanced chess player or even a chess pro, mastering chess combinations is a key element to unleashing the full beauty of this timeless game. So in this video we will be exploring the concept of chess combinations, their significance and how they can completely change the game. So without further time wasting, let's get started. And by the way, if you don't want to miss anything on this YouTube channel, feel free to subscribe and activate the announcement bell, because I'm really trying to reach the 1000 subscribers right now, so that I will be able to produce more chess videos for you and for my community and to increase the quality of them. Thank you. Chess combinations, as the name suggests, are tactical sequences that involve a forced line of moves or just one forced move, often accompanied by sacrifices of chess pieces. It's within these combinations that the true uniqueness of chess shines through. What makes them particularly appealing and interesting is definitely the nature of sacrificing material to achieve a superior position and situation on the chessboard. Of course in some position and games, also a checkmate or a material win. Combinations can be classified into three main categories based on their objectives. The first one is a mate combination, then there is of course the combinations for material advantage and material win and combinations for achieving a draw in a very difficult position where it seems that the only option is to draw, hopefully not losing the game. So let's begin with the mate combinations. These often resolve around identifying weak squares near the opponent's king. So I will just quickly show you an example now. In the position that you can see right now here on the chessboard, we can see a game from the year 1916, so already more than 100 years old, from a game between the Russian chess grandmaster and world champion with white Alexander Alochin against another chess player called Feld. In this position, black's e6 pawn and f7 square are really very weak. Therefore, the master of chess combinations, Elohim, finds the crazy move sacrificing his knight by moving with the e5 knight on f7, just completely sacrificing it but also attacking the black queen on d8. Therefore, black has to capture the knight now with his king, which is definitely a big, big mistake because this sacrifice was definitely not without an intention. In this position, Elohim captures Black's already announced very weak pawn here on e6, and here if the Black King escapes on f8, we can have a checkmate in the following two moves, but if he decides to escape on g6, then actually much won't change, because in this position, after pawn to g4, followed directly by knight to h4, now Alexander Alochin has won the game again, demonstrating his crazy ability to use checkmate combinations, calculating into the future of the game and sacrificing his chess pieces. But the checkmate combinations can also be classified into, into the following categories. There are other combinations including weak squares, like I've just shown you with the example from the game between Alexander Alochin and Feld from the year 916, then there are also distractions and the opening of the king's position. But now let's at first take a look at combinations including distractions on the chessboard. In this case, the chess piece who has the most important task is definitely the one that distracts the opponent's army from defending a strategic point or another chess piece on the board from their own army, which can lead to a mate, so a checkmate, or a major material loss. Let's just take a look again at an example. The position that you will see now on the chessboard is from a real chess game again from the year 1936, so a bit more modern, where this tactical combination was shown perfectly. So the position that you can see right now here on the chessboard, if the white king would stand on g5, then after rook to h8 with check, king escapes on f7 and rook to f8, this would be a checkmate. But I guess that if you're watching this video, you have eyes, one pair of eyes, just two eyes, 
and you see that it's not like that and the white king is not standing on g5 but rather on f4. So if you would try to move now on g5 trying to achieve this already shown checkmate, you know, then black could just capture our pawn here on e4 with this knight, also with a check leading to not us achieving this checkmate. But actually there is another and even more and even crazier and trickier way how to achieve this checkmate in the following moves. Because in this position we have to instantly play rook to h8 with check. So here the black king is forced to escape on the only possible square which is f7 and here we don't play rook to f8 because our knight here on g6 is not defended by our king. Therefore white plays even crazier move bishop to e8 with check distracting the black knight here on f6 from capturing our pawn here on e4. Because in this position he is at first forced to capture our bishop here on e8 on which we can just do what? Right, we have distracted the knight on f6 so we move now with the king on g5 achieving a forced checkmate on the following move after rook to f8. So now you have learned and seen by examples two tactical combinations. The first one was the weak square with the example with the chess game from the year 1916 from Alexander Alyochin and the second one the distraction with the game from the year 1936 which I've just shown you. And now we already come to the thirst and also to the last combination which is the already announced opening and breaking up of the opponent's king's position. So we're just exploiting our opponent's king. That's really, really, really exciting. It pretty often happens in chess games that the last rank, so either the 8th rank for the black chess pieces or the 1st rank of the chessboard for the white chess pieces becomes weak and undefended during the development of the chess game, especially in the end game or at the end of the middle game. So this enables lots of different and different attacking possibilities. Like for example in the position you can see right now here in the chessboard. Because in this position white starts with a very strong move knight to e7 with check again sacrificing his knight. So from this position black captures this knight with his lower rook, so from the, with the rook from e2. Then that's not really good for black because at first there's not anymore this checkmate threat with queen to c2 because of the rook standing now on e7 and because white will win after queen captures the rook like this. But if our opponent captures our knight on e7 now with his other rook, so with the rook from e1 like this, then it's just how I've announced to you. Because now black's last rank here, so the 8th rank of the chessboard, has become very very weak. Because after now white playing rook to d8 with check and black blocks the check with rook to e8, we play the crazy crazy move queen to f8 just completely sacrificing the queen now because it not being only supported by our bishop here on b4 through this diagonal but also by our rook on d8. So after the rook has captured our queen like this which is the only possible move we capture black's rook on f8 with our rook with a beautiful checkmate ending this game. So this was it then already with this video which I have shown you the three different options of the chess combinations of how to checkmate your opponent as fast as possible in different positions including this examples. So of course I hope that you liked the video and if you liked it feel free to leave a like then subscribe to my youtube channel Shachomat and don't forget to check out part 2 of this video series which will come out in the nearest future where we'll talk about the second combination tactic and then of course part 3 with the third combination tactic. So the second one are the combinations to get a material advantage on the chessboard against your opponent as fast as possible. So till next time, bye!